Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. A question I've always had is, why does everyone type me so differently? And this question goes out to you as well. Have you ever felt that other people keep seeing you differently? You've gone to different organizations and they've all typed you and you've gotten a different type in every system. You've gone to different friends and they all have different things to say about you. You thought about how you see yourself as opposed to how other people see you and you've noticed there's a difference. Why is that? How can we see ourselves so differently? In what way of seeing things is correct? What I've discovered is different organizations in personality psychology are interested in different sub-branches of psychology. That means uh, while Carl Jung was most interested in the cognitive psychology of how we think and process information and make decisions, other systems like the Big Five are more focused on behavioral psychology, which is how we act and what we do. Now, you don't have to be a genius to realize that there can be a difference in how you think and how you act. Sometimes your thought process behind your actions is vastly different to your actual behavior and your actions taken. You can talk about it from different angles. You can say you have a socialized self, which is how other people see you. You have an actual self, which is how you see you. And then you have an unconscious self. And a lot of the time our cognition, our thought process is unconscious to us, which is it is not clearly visible. We cannot measure it. We cannot uh, scientifically observe it or test it very easily. That means a lot of the time what the MBTI does and what Carl Jung did was considered while well interesting to be pseudoscience. We cannot measure it so perhaps it exists but we will never know for sure. So <laughs> The self is another interesting topic here. The self is somewhere in the middle. The self doesn't rest on either the study of cognition or behavior as much as it rests upon our mindset and our values. The self is, as we describe it, a definition of how we have learned to see the world, whether we believe ourselves to be just or good people, whether we believe ourselves to be trustworthy uh, or trusting of others whether we believe ourselves to be more optimistic or pessimistic, or our values, which is what we fundamentally want, what we think is most important to us, our freedom, our need for privacy, our need for achievement or success. All those things are what people tend to first describe when they talk about their personality. Now, different organizations focus on different matters of personality psychology. You have, for example, the big five up in the top, most focused on behavior. Then you have the DISC personality system focused on mindset and behavior. When you take a DISC test at work or online, you'll find that a lot of the questions have to do with how you tend to act, how other people tend to see you, and what you tend to, how you tend to see the world. So you can divide people into red, blue, green or yellow types based on their overall mindset and behavior. The Enneagram is another interesting system focusing on not the behavior so much as the values and the mindset combined. That means the Enneagram is the most closely reflecting of yourself as you see yourself. That means it focuses on your thought patterns, developed beliefs and developed ideas about what is valuable. When you go deeper into the mind, into more of the unconscious areas, you reach the Myers-Briggs type indicator. The Myers-Briggs type indicator rests on the intersection between the Enneagram and the pure study of the Jungian cognitive functions. The Myers-Briggs type indicator focuses on the values a person has and their cognition, their thought process. So when you get an MBTI personality description, the idea is to describe what you value and what you find most important and how you think and act and how you see the world and how you process information. So rather than focus and, and dive in too much into the mindset, which it certainly does but not enough, it focuses on the actual cognitive decision making process, the thought process in the mind, how the mind develops and organizes information, how it sees and deals with and processes the external world and stimulus. So uh, the idea in Myers-Briggs is, and this is 
a purely a Jungian idea, is that everyone has an innate different way of processing information. We literally see and consciously perceive the world differently. We have different criteria when we process and make information, different ways to do it, different ways to approach the world logically or uh, empathetically or socially, different ways to experience and deal with the world based on whether we focus on the internal or the external, the intuitive, the sensing, the feeling, thinking, judging or perceiving aspects. Now, the Myers-Briggs type indicator is different than the pure study of the Jungian cognitive functions. When Carl Jung developed his theory, he didn't touch much upon the values of an introverted intuitive type. He only described the thought process, the way of dealing with information. He tr merely tried to explain the reasoning style, what was happening inside, like when we built up our arguments or feelings about a situation, when we went through a situation, what we looked at first, how we looked through it, how we organized it, how we developed it, how we uh, felt it inside internally. And uh, so the MBTI, it goes into and it expands into a new dimension of personality psychology, one that is also touched upon by the Enneagram. The Enneagram and the MBTI have quite a lot of overlap in how they type people, despite having a different type system. That means because both share overall the same values in both systems, there's a great deal of overlap. You'll find that sevens share a lot of the similar values to extroverted intuitives. And you'll find that, for example, introverted intuitives share a lot of similar values to Enneagram type fives. These are all like con deeper connections that describe what we think the world should be, what we care most about, what we want most from the world. Now, if you look at the systems based on their connections to each others, the big five, the system that is most popular, preferred by scientists, is only 10% correlated with the study of the Jungian cognitive functions. And how you type based on the Jungian cognitive functions is vastly different than how you type depending on your socialized behavior. Truth of the matter is a lot of time people can socially develop to act very differently than how they think. And we can't always connect the study of the mind to our study of behavior. A lot of the time these studies have to be comp kept completely separate. If you move on to the study of mindset, mindset psychology, DISC, the Enneagram is about 25 to 50 percent correlated to the study of the Jungian cognitive functions. There are big overlaps between our Enneagram type and our cognitive function preference in the study of Jung. That means uh, a lot of time you'll have the same type, but not always. There's a, at least a 50 to 75% chance that you'll type differently in these systems. If you go towards uh, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the Myers-Briggs type indicator is about f between 50 to 75% connected to the study of the Jungian and cognitive functions. That means you can have a completely different MBTI type than your actual Jungian cognitive function preference. And when you dive deeper into Jung studies, you'll notice this. There are similarities, but there are also differences that will cause you to sometimes type differently. And the differences is, while you share the similar cognition as described by the MBTI and Jung, you can share, you can have different values. That means the overlap is not complete. When you look at the new Jungian typology, which is uh, the field that I'm working through, the idea is to have a comprehensive outlook on personality and to see the differences between the different systems. These are all different systems melded into one. And the idea is to provide a full definition of self, to uh, provide an understanding both of your personal self as described by you and the hidden self as investigated by Carl Jung. It is also to describe and understand the social self as you are described by others. So that means it's an undertaking that uh, is quite huge and quite difficult, but still extremely fascinating. I started out purely EACF. That meant I was purely focused on understanding the cognitive functions. I developed cognitive function tests that asked you abstract questions about how your mind worked. Turns out most people have no clue how their mind works. A lot of people when asked these questions have no idea what to respond. And that meant it was very difficult to develop a pure cognitive function test. 
it was difficult because yeah while some people who have thought and introspected and thought a lot about it were very aware of this part of themselves other people who were more socialized had little awareness of this and people who are more dominated by their social self who describe themselves by how other people see them tend to have a very low self-awareness on a cognitive scale. Similarly, people who have a very high awareness on a cognitive scale, who have a very deep understanding of their social thinking patterns, might not have a strong awareness of how other people see them and might not even describe themselves accurately as portrayed by other people. A lot of the time when they talk about how they think, other people say, but you act completely differently. And here's uh, why the study is so fascinating and ideally it's better to focus and start around the center working with first the Enneagram or the Myers-Briggs type indicator focusing first on your own self-image try to understand yourself first and try to see yourself as accurately as possible and then start expanding to understanding the perspectives of other people and then start investigating and diving deeper into your the more hidden parts of your mind that way you can reach a more full understanding of self and of other. Thanks for watching this video and if you have any thoughts about this, let me know in the comments down below.